strap on your tool belts, and grab a cup of coffee. It's time for My Fix It Up Life with Mark and Teresa. Hey guys, we are here. It's My Fix It Up Life. I'm Mark and that's Teresa. I'm just waiting. Go ahead. What would you say if your spouse said that to you? Uh Now we're talking about woodworking today and I think we were inspired when we were recently at the Craftsman Experience and we did a little lathe. Makeation. Did a little lathe action with Dan Carey. Oh, yes, yes, Rob yes. Rob Johnstone. From Woodworkers, Woodworkers Journal. Journal. And they're going to be on. Well, Dan's going to be on. I think Rob sort of is in hiding, in secret hiding. <laughs> and we also have some cool cats too. Pauline. Pauline Henderson makes some wonderful wood art. My altar state, I've got a little bit of her art right back here. And then we also have Tara Dara, who is crazy cool, awesome. Did you know she used to be like a bodybuilding person? You should see the photo. It's sick. Cut it up. Yes. And Jimmy. Everybody knows Jimmy from the Discovery Channel and all those other t- TV shows. And I think we're going to have him pop into his seat first, if everyone's cool with that. Let's bring in Jimmy. It's sensational to meet you. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. This is wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I've i heard about you a couple of times from a couple of different people. And I went to your YouTube channel, watched the YouTube video about the vampire table. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That was recently. Yeah. That was, uh, I do a, I do a, a once a month feature for Core 77. So that was for Core 77, yeah. But it's me. It's my show. That but sounds scary. It was um, so good that I realized I had to make a choice. Either I'd still be watching Jimmy Duresta videos or I had to stop there and and leave, <laughs> leave it the innocence. Because I also... Did you watch the binge? I believe that my husband doesn't usually have depends on. And I feel as though that would become an issue at some point. Don't in time. need them. Don't need them. Basements being remodeled. I can Speaking go. Speaking of there. that, this is starting to bother me. Like but nobody's my, my microphone. I'm just going to touch you a little bit. Okay. You just put my microphone so, uh, under my. So am I, am I still coming through clearly? Yeah. You know I, mean? I just need to, okay, okay. to like, Okay, so I'm a visual person. I get totally distracted by things flying at me. Okay. You're you're annoying. Are we on Periscope, by the way? Is that where we are? I don't are we on Periscope? No, we're on Blab. It's called Blab. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, have you been on Blab before? Not before right now. I never even heard That's of it. That's awesome. Well, welcome to Blab. I will be your host, yes. Teresa, and this is my husband Mark. And we wanted to talk to you about woodworking. And we've got some people calling in, too. So before... Where are you guys? What's that? What city are you in? What city are you in? We're in Philadelphia. Oh, cool. So it's dark where you are, too. I'm in New York. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting dark earlier all the time. Which is totally fine, because I love this time of year. October is just, just slightly chilly before it goes all the way to cold. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a cold person. Oh, hi, puppy. What's your name? That's Lucky. Mm. He's so anxious for some reason. He's How old? He's really nervous without me. How old? He's my daughter. He's about 14. We just lost his brother from another mother. We had a he, he had a, a, a lookalike, Woody, who died last week. They were both 14. Wow. So since Woody died, he's really nervous. Yep. Big so change. he's anxiously running around my feet. Big so, yeah. so you have, from what I can gather, two properties where you work. You're in Brooklyn, and then you have a country yeah. property. Uh, yeah, I worked. Well, it's the Lower East Side of Manhattan, which is basically the East Village, is my shop down there for about 15 years. And uh, also in upstate New York, where I am right at the moment. Oh, great. So I work at it both. I'm, I'm working on trying to work upstate full time and close down my New York City shop. But that's going to take some time. Well, you are a busy guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm a workaholic. Now, are you, is, like, is your work your passion? Is it your life? It is, yeah. It is really my life. I teach things, too. I teach how to make things as well at the New York City School of Visual Arts. So I've been teaching there for about 22 years. 
and I've been uh, making things my whole life. I'm, ever since I was in like elementary school, I've always made things with my hands to exchange for money. So it's uh, I'm proud to be able to say that. Well, it's all I've ever done. I was going to, we important. need to bring in some people that are waiting because we're so late. But I was wondering, I want to ask you a question. You are yeah. <clears throat> familiar with randomness in life. So if you had a box like this in your shop, and it had yeah. your like your shop essentials in it. What would you put in your shop essentials box? That's like this big. Yeah, um, I probably would put a chisel, mm -hmm. a chisel, a mallet, a little pull saw, and uh, a hand plane, like a Veritas low angle lock plane, and um, what else? A little battery operated drill. Very small one. Yeah, because yeah. you have to be small to be in this little box. Here. Exactly that one. I have two of those. Exactly that one. Is that a, is no, that a Stanley? It's a That's Stanley. a Stanley. It's, a, it's not a Lee Valley yeah. and Veritas. Um, yeah. I, have, I have that one as well. That's why I recognize it right away. Yeah, the Veritas, I'm just so used to it. It's just such a sturdy little piece of it's equipment. A well, I need to yeah, it is beautiful. honor our commitments. And can you stay when we br we're going to bring in Pauline? She made this behind us. She is a like geek wood beyond artist. geek about wood and reclaimed stuff. You want sure. To I love yeah. reclaimed. A lot of what I do is reclaimed. All right. So Pauline is joining us. And I've got, I've got I'm a little angry with her, though. Let's not spend a lot of time on this. This is just not that important. It's important to me because yeah. I love the Twitter and social networking and connecting with people. And somebody recently changed her Twitter handle. I'm sorry. It wasn't me. Can you hear me? We can. We can. Okay. I can hear no, you. No, I... This is adjusting. What are you doing? Uh, me? Her. Okay. Can hear me now? Okay. Everything good? Right. Yes, I changed my Twitter handle. It was back when I started Twitter, I didn't have a blog and I just I wanted at a girl Pauline and someone had at a girl you know, that was all taken. So I thought, oh, I'll be so clever to use the at sign and add the T and A. <laughs> I don't know. But it just seemed easier to go with my altered state, to change it to my altered state, because I don't know if everyone knows my first name. So. Yeah, I found, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I found that uh, a lot of my, my friends have started uh, channels with uh, that isn't their name, and then as time goes on, they want it to be their name, so they have to... They have to change it. So when people ask me advice, I always say, just go with what you want your name to be forever because to change it later. You know, they start with like a quirky thing and then they kind of get stuck with it as their branding <laughs> once they get popular. Yeah. And it kind of, it becomes a pain to change it later. So I always say, just go with your personal name because that's who people are going to remember. Yeah. I can't, I can't hear. Can you hear that? No, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> We've just been carrying it on our own conversation. You guys are adorable. Can you hear us now? Yes. Okay. Right. I Don't just, touch like, anything else. I can't help you're it. In your, it's like being in a room full of butterflies. Aw, <laughs> he thinks I'm a butterfly. Yeah, he's like a butterfly Compliment. Okay. Okay, so we. I just, Pauline, I just asked Jimmy this question. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. No. Your shop essentials fits in this box. We're going to talk to Jimmy for a sec while you think. The, the, the clock is a ticking. Okay. Okay, so Jimmy, what? I thought you were going to put a mask on. That's awesome. Do you I have know, a stick I... for that? Are you part time hobo? <laughs> always. I'm always on the move. I live out of the back of my pickup truck. Do you ever take a wrong turn at Albuquerque? <laughs> I've been all around this this the last six months. I've driven probably about about ten thousand miles on my truck. Holy smokes! Oh. Chip Wade, we're ready for you Seven. in a few minutes, buddy. We totally will be. Yes. We are. It's and psyched I see, you're here. I see. Wait, somebody had a question for Jimmy on the side. People want to know about your show. Like, what's going on these days? 
Uh, well, YouTube is my show. I've given up on TV. I get calls all the time, and I, I poo-poo TV. The new future is YouTube. There's no more TV executives between me and my audience forever. I so love that. That's that's my that's my uh, my mantra. I no more TV executives in the mix ever again. Good for you. Yeah, that is really, yeah, that yeah. is quite unique to hear. I think I said to a yeah. said producer. TV executives lack one important thing that's really in, in, important when it comes to trying to show off what you do. They lack they lack talent. So <laughs> you're getting blown up with feels right now. Watch you see your oh, screen. People are loving on you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this the future is nobody between what I want to say and the people that want to hear it. I've, I've done so many TV shows where it's everything has been out of my control, and then once I appear to the world, I get emails saying, "When am I going to be able to see you again?" And I say, "It's not up to me. It's up to 15 people that don't care about anything but their jobs, and they don't care about me." And so, unfortunately, I've been left in the dust several times. And so from now on, it's just me and my audience, whether it be YouTube or my own YouTube or my own personal website or wherever it may be. But I love that. I it's, love so, that. it's so funny because I still talk to TV executives all the time. They, they get calls from production companies all every month. I get at least one or two calls from production companies. And they're like, would you be a part of an ensemble? And they're just completely talking in the past. They have absolutely no concept of like the, where the audience is wanting to go. They're like, um, we're going to do this thing where it's like a shop and there's like a hierarchy. And I'm like, no one cares about any of this anymore. Like, why don't you guys do a show about things people want to watch? And it's so funny. I was even told I had a very big pitch meeting last year. We went to every network. And um, I was told by my, my agents representing me for that pitch. Then I don't have agents. They said, do not bring up YouTube in any one of these. You know, I went to A&E, Discovery, History. National Geographic. I was reminded each time because it's my world. They said, "Do not bring up YouTube." It's okay because they're afraid of it. Yeah, and it's like the best revenge that I that I can that I can I imagine. I, you know, I think it's like kind of the whole social like networking kind of thing, thing and how it's sort of taken away the public role a lot for celebrities. Too. Yeah. Like it's like yeah. it takes away that middle person totally. And you're like that, my alter state, Pauline Henderson. I feel like we have a weird show feedback you thing going on. We do. You reach in my shirt, it's not going to fix it. What if I want to reach in your shirt? We're it, married. Uh, all right, off it comes. No, 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 no. No, you need this. No, I determined you do need this. I, I, I know. You know what? I'm going to shove this up my nose. Here's the thing. So we've been doing a radio show for oh, six years, I guess. And we started off doing a radio show, My Fix It Up Life, in the studio. That was fine. But it's like talking in the closet, you know, by yourself kind of thing. And then we started, yeah. I just wanted to try to find a way that we could be more interactive. So as the years have gone, we've tried everything. We tried, what? Um, Google Plus. Well, recently. And, and live stream and you stream and all those different things. Lots of streams. To try to, like, create this yeah. environment. This black thing is yeah. totally new, and I love the Brady Bunch thing yeah. about it that you can talk to more than one person yeah. at a time. There's, there's lots of growing pains with all this technology, but it's it's going to take over. I mean, I, I, everybody I talk to just out of curiosity, I say, "When did you cancel your cable?" And everybody says, "Last year, last month, two months ago." You know, so everyone's turning cable off because they don't need to pay for it, and the content that's coming out of the major networks is just garbage. It just continues to be garbage. Yeah, there's always going to be a hit show for, you know, from time to time. But you think about the younger generation, they're not paying attention to TV. They're paying attention to YouTube. You know, when I do live events, little kids come to see me. They don't think they don't think that I'm not on TV. They don't, you know, they, I'm just somebody they watch through a computer and they, they get entertained in their life. Yeah, Anybody they, who makes a vampire they, table with a metal lathe. I'm listening to. That's all I have to say. Okay. Okay. I, I we have some people calling in. Jimmy, do you want to stay on or do you want to give up your seat? Uh, I'll stay if you want that's, me to. I don't that's care. very cool. I think that we had said that Dan was going to be on in the next spot. So we have a spot open in the bottom of the fourth. It's like that old well, show. Wait a minute. Just bring in bring, the center click, square. Click what was that? What's that show? You've been clicking me for the whole thing. We got people yeah. waiting. I'm asking Pauline about her box. 
what's her essentials box as Dan's joining us? All right. What's in there? I'm trying to get the glare off my face. Just really bright. Dan, could your shop um, be more authentic? You have to have authenticity bleeding down the wall. Let's get to Pauline. What is your, what would be in your essentials workshop box? Dan, I'm coming for you next. Okay. okay. Uh, what would be in my box? Probably a bigger box. Nice. <laughs> Nicely played. You've been outwitted. Come on. Good for you. No, I just, I don't know. That's so hard. I never know what I'm going to be like into. What is that? That just says my name. You have it on your hat and on your thing. <laughs> what is it? A oh, just like, a do you oh. have these on? <laughs> I do, but I can't lift my leg that high. So you can just do this. And Dan, clearly, that's probably your footwear as well. Or you can do this to your husband. Hey, yes. I, do. <laughs> I, I even rolled up my pants like clam diggers. Oh, nice. What are we like swapping our tools here? This is a woodworking show. Oh, and yeah, that's you right. You want to talk about Twitter and social media. I mean, I want to talk about cutting boards, <laughs> making stuff. Let's talk about boards. All right. Then. Carrie, talk about it. What? <laughs> What? I'm hot and taking my jacket off. <laughs> I totally handed you an impossible, an impossible handoff. Yeah, you just fumbled on the goal line, and I'm. Just... I fumbled nothing. I am not Seattle Seahawks guy who played awesome last night. Uh, Drew Wilson. Okay. Right? All right, everybody here. We're talking about woodworking. Let's yes. dig in, Dean. Dan. No. What's your current project? Woodworker Journal Magazine. Current project for. You know, I've been working on uh, just personal stuff. I'm not doing anything uh, project-wise for the magazine right now. I'm doing more uh, personal home remodeling kind of stuff. So did a lot of summertime stuff. Um, did some canoe uh, paddle build, building and stuff like that. Um, and then, yes, as Teresa's showing, I just spent the last few days with you guys uh, teaching what was it, 25 people? So that yeah, was, that was a great by the way. In Brooklyn, 12 lathes, um, 12 beginning turners all at the same time. So there was a lot of helping one person, and then out of the corner of my eye, seeing someone else, whoop, hold on, I'm going to run over there and stop what's about to go wrong over there. But I think we had a good time. Everybody made uh, pizza cutter and a bottle of pizza, so that was a lot of fun. And you had to deal with me, too. You were not a beginning wood turn. That was exciting. I had lathed it down before, yeah. baby. Lathed it down. <laughs> My God. You got some. I did some lathing, and then I went and ran over, did some spray painting. Then I went to talk to some people, and I came back and did some lathing. And then I was the like, I don't even know. Is lathing a word? I'm going to give you guys, okay, I was lathing. woodworker guys, a nervous breakdown by showing showing you how mangled the edge of that chisel is. Because you don't use it as a chisel. I don't. No. This is my carpenter's chisel. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of people who can sharpen. We lost. What do you use it as? You can still sharpen. I, I use it for when I need to notch a hunk of wood in rough carpentry. If I need to blow something out that I can't get through with my five in one tool. Um, I'm not it's supposed to your five in one tool. It scrapes gum off of the floor really easy. That's what I use mine for. You can use it for anything. You know, it's All right, we have to let. Um, Chip Wade's been trying to get in here. I think that we might have to say goodbye. Yeah. I'm sorry, but your time has come to an end, Jimmy. Everyone has to go follow him at Jimmy. I'm going to say your last name wrong. DeResta. 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 Right. Jimmy, thank you. Thank you. I want to leave you up with. Thank you, guys. I like your work, Jimmy Offerman, who said. If you are read this far in my book, throw it away and go read, go watch Jimmy Duresta's 
<laughs> yeah, Nick is a is a good buddy of mine. We 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 became friends on the canoe video where he makes the canoe. I shot and edited that, and that was all bonding. Yeah. Oh, really? If, did you see the canoe video? Yeah, I walked. Yeah. I walked. I, it was just video. me and Nick yeah. alone in the wood shop for about uh, six months. It was a lot of fun. It was a great experience, and that was all bonding experience in two thousand and seven and eight. It was it was a great time, and then a few months later, he got uh, he got to become. Ron Swanson. So it was, I got to watch all that happen. It was great. Oh, that's I that's love that. That's cool. no, Thank I you very much. Like yeah, it was a lot of fun to shoot. And I have like about 10 hours that hasn't been edited. <laughs> Probably not much so, laughing. But, no, no. People, Nick says a lot of people contact him and they say, why is this? A, this isn't funny. What is this all about? And he said, it's about building a canoe. It's not meant to yeah. be funny. <laughs> that's awesome. So, do I do I X myself I out can, to make? I can own? X you out, but I just want to say thank you so much because you're like a woodworker's like hero. You're like you're the action figure thank of you. woodworking. <laughs> I, I I actually just did a little thing called Toy Backer where I sold a, an action figure myself. It wasn't back. my idea, but I went along. We're coming with it. back, we have I to have want back. that. I'm Xing you out. We gotta X you out, Jimmy. Thank we'll you. We'll stalk you on social. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you guys. I appreciate. It. I'll, I'll, Kicked out. We got rid of him. Thank Ooh, I moved up a talk square. About him. And let's bring in. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wait. Oh, no, she moved down a square. I don't know how to move. I see. I see. Okay. Let's pause for a second. I see London. I see France. I see Chip Waits. So if I go like this, it looks like I'm looking at you guys. Chip, it looks like Hi. it's coming together. Like this. Okay. What's happening? It's the Brady Bunch. <laughs> That's what I've been describing it to everyone. Blab is like the Brady Bunch. Only I can't. Like... Oh no! Don't hurt someone. We can like. Ooh. Dan, do you have one of these? Ooh. I'm trying to. I'm yeah. trying to give the high <laughs> five. Here. I can give a low five down here. There we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Super oh, talented. Hey, Chip, oh, yeah. you might want to, if you can hear me, abandon this one and try to call back in. Right. He might just be like taking a wee break too because we didn't so bounce funny. him in. You never know. There you go. Oh, Here we I'm go. up again. Oh, okay. Hi. Let's see if this happens. I was going to ask Dan my box question, but Pauline totally I, ruined it for me. But I'm still going to ask questions. you. What's in your box? I'm sorry. That's, that's to the Mark Fix It Up Life program. Welcome. It's so good to see you. Look at you, Mr. Handsome Pants. I'll do it. Hanging in. Hanging in. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. What's up, guys? How are you doing, Dan? Pauline, good to see you. <laughs> so, Dan. Dan's Hello? trying to give you a high five. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, you can squash Dan like this. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you have to. I want to forget my Angry Bird shirt. I'm uh, wearing because my son likes me to wear these when we play. Sorry. <laughs> that is awesome. I absolutely love that. Okay, so Dan is clearly in someone's workshop. Colleen looks like she has I mean, a lot of work to do on her whiteboard. Where is Chip today? I'm in my office, actually, at my house. Uh, but. If I change to my mobile, maybe I can show you all my workshop. But I have one down at down at my uh, in my lower level that I've made where we shoot a lot of my shows and it's kind of my custom fab shop. We totally want to see that. I we'll, want to we'll, see that. We'll Call that, back in we'll or whatever on, it is. Uh, tech though. No, we'll totally be cool. As long as you have three bars, you can be in blab without a prob. Cool, cool. Watch out, y'all, for a little bit, and then I'll see if it'll work. Okay, yeah, totally. Cool. Cool. Now I have an opportunity to ask Dan my question. Okay. What would be in your essentials workshop box and not another box? That's that big. It's got to be in that box. Yeah. You can't borrow my chisel. Uh, a bandsaw, a cabinet <laughs> table saw, 16-inch joiner, um, 
So I just want to say something to you. The box looks very big. I'm not a giant, and this isn't. I'm not behind you in the mirror of your car. Some objects may. Okay. Yeah. Not happening. Okay. I'm not a large person. It's it's bigger than me. Okay. You know what, Jimmy's answer was I was mate was so close to what I would have answered as far as low angle block plane, um, chisel, mallet. Um, the other thing I would have uh, it's kind of a strange thing probably, but um, I like ice picks. Believe it or not, like like these kind of ice picks. Hey, I'm too close. Cool, cool ice picks. <laughs> It's kind of like an all um, for starting screws, that kind of stuff. You can poke a fairly deep hole and then get a screw started without uh, without a pilot hole. I, I, I keep, look, I've got ice picks like this in all my toolbox. Oh, you've got, you've got stacks of bodies over there. That's no, obvious. that's no. not where my mind went. No. I think that. In front of him <laughs> is the bar. Behind him is the tools. No, it's. I'm telling you, garage sales. You can find these things, and they're great. You, you need to drive a screw, push the ice pick in there, and then boom. Well, I'll, you can buy it. Uh, yeah, wait, 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 Okay, that's. Can we talk what? about the topic? Go ahead. Okay. Um, oh, the, back here. Yeah, I think that's pretty pretty hot. Oh, look at this. Is uh, from the masters. It's not unsettling at all. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Between that and the ice picks, I'm sending Chip <laughs> over to your house to to oh, just God. with like a black jacket. <laughs> this is the masters bucket hat. It stays right up here. That's it's awesome. Place above. Yes, I use. Some of, some of the best tools are from your kitchen or utensil things like spatula. I can't distress anything without a spatula. And those tong things that are supposed to be for the barbecue or whatever, when I'm rust, if I have to rust some, remove the galvanized stuff off some metal, they work a lot better than nice. my hands. Nicely done. So I'm with you on the ice pick. I could totally, if I had one, I'd probably be using that too. That's because the thing, the smaller yeah, things get lost. Garage sales and stuff, they're floating around. People used to buy them all the time. Well, I'm, I'm ready want? to be Julie McCoy and say, let us go with Chip and go down into his lower level and see yes. what ice picks he may have in his workshop. <laughs> you want me to see if it'll work? I totally. Yeah, you can always bounce back in from there if it well, if it doesn't fly. No, I'm totally not going to do that because I'm not go. I'm not showing after what he's got. <laughs> Mine's going to look rinky dink. I'm sure. You just don't want him to feel thing. bad that yours is so unbelievable. I know how it is. Uh, this is just a, it's just a small it's so little thing, bad. but it's it's my. I, I do love it. Let me see if I can get in here. Let's see if that can work. And and I'm gonna get this name wrong at Sinley F. It's calling us the Blabby Bunch. We totally are the Blabby Bunch. I'm okay with that because I am comfortable with myself as being a chatterbox. We know. I mean, that there's no barrier there. Not really. <laughs> oh my gosh, I I'm totally ignoring the side chat here that's going on. DIY you guys are Girl Cave awesome. He's talking that it sounds like a Dexter episode. Sawdust but, twenty with sawdust two cents says I use a knife as a screwdriver for my outlet covers. What? You are bad. Dan, Pretty handy girl with the garage sale. Yeah. Dan, I use a scratch all like you do to start a screw hole in a, in a so that I can get it started right in the middle of where the hinge hole. You know what I mean? Oh. Hi. Yeah. I, I'm in the. I'm in the top I think we square, need an intervention so happening because th no, I'm just looking at Justin DePago and he's talking about ice picks and his family. Going on. All right, can you all hear me again? Yes. Huh. There's feedback. Are we having a race? 
Dun, Are we having a race? Dun, 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 I'm almost dun. there. This is so cool. Honey, we're riding on the carriage together. Oh, oh look, a knife from the kitchen that I was using on Show board. us the board. <laughs> I like the dance track. What the hell is it? <laughs> we're in my shop. I look away for one second. Look what it, and Carrie's turned himself into Austin Powers. Look what I won, you guys at Haven oh Conference. Oh my goodness gracious me! Oh my. Not not the paint center, but uh, jealousy factors this. going hey. on. Yeah. We were at Haven. The uh, I work for Rockland, so we were there. You won the lane. I won what? the lane, girl. I did. Yes. Crazy! Right here. Your DIY girl yeah. Here. yeah, I cried. Oh my gosh, I cried a little because because my awesome. I cried. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. I'm awesome. so thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, I want a lathe. Really cool. What do I have to do to win one? Chip, I'm just telling you that I'm just watching gave another one away at. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, I'm being patient. It's all good. Oh. <laughs> I'm sitting on my table saw. <laughs> Damn you, Wade. Damn you. Hey, well, look, I got this. I got a drill press the other day. That's really. Look at that guy. How old is that? I don't know. I haven't that looked into it yet, but it runs perfectly. It's a simple machine. And it doesn't have to do much. <laughs> I'm really excited. I can't wait to drill a bunch of holes in something. That's outstanding. Yeah. So okay, I'm ready for the big the. Oh yeah, Can let's, let's, let's sit back. Awesome, let's Pauline. sit back and and enjoy the show. All right, Chip. Yes. Take, take us through like <laughs> like uh, you're you're walking us around. We all have a beer. All right. Well, this is kind of my escape. This isn't a production facility. This is kind of my own private workshop. It's kind of meant for just experimenting, doing one-off pieces, um, and playing. It's also where uh, family, friends, anybody that wants to learn how to do stuff, I have everything here, and we can make pretty much whatever you want. I've got full metalworking, uh, uh, full woodworking, uh, metalworking, woodworking shop, and we do some composite stuff in here and some other kind of a little bit higher tech stuff. I've got like uh, CO2 lasers and 3D printers and all that type of stuff floating around. So. It's just really kind of an, uh, the place where you can come and make it, which is kind of fun. So I'm this is right uh, here. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually, yeah. Come on. Come on, Dan. All right. So you can see it's actually just, it's right off of the rest of my lower level. You just come right through the door and immediately you see um, maybe some organization of some cord. This is my cordless corner, right? So you can kind of see. <laughs> Um, kind of some of that action happening over here. Organization is key, right? Anytime you're in a workshop, whether you have a lot of space or a little bit of space, you have to have stuff organized. And I'm an engineer. I'm super anal about no. everything when it comes to being super particular. Uh, and you have to have a great facility where you know where everything is or else it becomes a frustration. So over here, I mean, you just kind of, everything has its spot, you know? I mean, I even do a lot of like more like retail display type stuff, like even saws, like uh, reciprocating blades, everything. When it gets done, it's got a, you know, a, a thing where, you know, where you need to order more, which is good. Um, and here is more of the metalworking room, which is kind of dark right now, but the metalwork, there's some... <laughs> There, there's all yeah. kinds of fun, um, you know, some of the essential big band saws, big combination press breaks, cold saws. Yeah. My, metal, my metal working I, room has a piece of plastic that oh, I can't wow. use. I, I'm wondering if you have like um, a front end loader and a Zamboni in there as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If there was room, I would. Oh my gosh, uh, I might not I, I, I need my inhaler. What's going on? How many? But this is one thing. <laughs> if you're really curious about great setup for all your stuff, the more obviously everybody says get things off of the floor, right? Floor is absolutely 
biggest at when it comes to a small workshop. So I recently did more of like a, a nice polish just on the floor, but it's nothing crazy. I kept it gray. Um, I kept it. Y'all, y'all hear me? Y'all all went blank. Yes. No. No, we're, we're just yeah. all right. stunned with. So yeah. this is French. This just has. It's got a nice. It's got a nice sheen on it. But what that allows me to do, if it's maybe if it's cutting oil off of a saw, or I want to do like some layout. It keeps everything nice and nice and neat. But up on the wall, you know, just having everything where you can literally just go up here and grab it. So it's just kind of an array where you can see what you have. It clears out all your space. So all my drawers are really more for like the cluttery stuff. I have things like sandpaper, all that type of stuff. Just very clearly organized and all of this type of thing, you know, just to make sure that it doesn't look uh, cluttered. I have a sanding room and I actually put some exterior doors with weather stripping around them. So I can actually close it off, have air filtration, oh. everything in here, which if I, sorry, it's a little bit cluttered in here, uh, but it, yeah, that it, looks like it keeps it all, it keeps it all kind of contained. So it has its own uh, air filtration and dust collector and all that type of stuff. And we've got a little material storage going on. Um, other than that, everything is on wheels, which I think is another huge, huge thing. Uh, I invested uh, even my center work uh, work table right here that has a big barn door slider I just made the other day on it. You can see down here, everything has these mobile bases on it, right? So from the table saw to every single piece of big equipment, what this allows me to do is to keep this main volume of space in the middle of the room as open as possible. That just gives you versatility. I mean... Everybody knows about, you know, running all their central air and all of their other mechanicals, kind of keeping it up and out of the way. Uh, but like I said, just keeping it nice and clean, keeps you organized, uh, makes the joy of woodworking and other things uh, still a joy instead of wondering where the heck everything is. <laughs> I have two qu two comments, I guess. Who has a question? Okay. I forgot the first one, but the second one is, <laughs> oh, well, the first one is, now we know what makes Mark and Teresa be quiet. <laughs> Second one is, I've always thought that Chip was a handsome man, but now it's something else entirely. <laughs> this is magic. This is like Disneyland for like maker geeks. Like, I would show you my standing room. But we've got to get on the tram to go. To that <laughs> and so we don't have time for that right now. So Right. No, I, I understand, Dan, because mine's in right. my helicopter. This is where I keep my sanding room. It's in the. <laughs> this is my sanding room. <laughs> nice. Chip, that you are awesome. like you are like you, the rock star god of like oh my gosh how long did it take to create this place? You know, it's kind of been. I had another workshop at my previous house. I actually built this house a couple of years ago. So I mean, I'm just in my I'm just in my house. This is just part of like a lower level. Um, but is your ceiling glossy? Oh yeah, check this out. So there this is reflection? actually aluminum tile. That's so cool. So there's a little bit of reflection there, mm -hmm. you can see, which also just... Oh, but the light, it helps with the light, I bet. Yeah, so all these cans, they're all LED, they're all 4,000K cans, which is a really white light, which is also a great thing, uh, specifically over all your workstations. One thing that I'm about to do is around the perimeter, like along the, the wall all the way down up at the top, I'm actually putting other uh, really high-intensity LED strips uh, and then I'm going to put a reflector on it, and it's just going to cast across the ceiling and then wash down. Uh, it not only just creates a super bright ambient light that will be dimmable, but I also do a lot of production work in here, meaning we film. Uh, it allows me to kind of color balance yeah. everything. So if you're making videos, if you're doing anything, whether it's for the web or you know for things that maybe are a little bit more uh, professional uh, even than that, it just provides a, a place where I can come in here, pull out a camera, shoot what I'm doing, and it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's there, awesome. There are a That's lot awesome. of jealous people in this um, comment <laughs> here. I'm not even going to say what they are because I feel the exact same way as everyone else. Is <laughs> I will say, if you haven't seen yeah. this, this is one of my favorite new things that I put in here on the ceiling. 
Uh, let me see if I can position it. You see that? Have y'all seen the Robo I'm, Reels? Oh, Robo I'm Jones Reels. into one of those hard. Dude, these things what is are. That? So it's basically, if you can kind of see, it's a auto retractable <clears throat> um, plug system, right? So you can kind of see here, right? So it's just a plug, plug a tri tap, and it just has a cord that goes up to this ball. But the cool thing is that you can be wherever you want to be. Sorry, I'm being terrible with my left hand. But basically, look at this. You click it twice, and it pulls it. It pulls it up for you. Yep. Oh my goodness, that right. works so much better than this. Right. So you can have overhead power drops over all your workstations. They also make one for air. Um, Their hose uh, reel, the water hose reel one, is crazy too. I haven't done the water hose reel, but I will say that the the compressed air and the power is absolutely dynamite. Um, it's just one of those things that's easy for any shop. Uh, and oftentimes they have the ones that they also have a mount where you can just hang it on the wall and take Does it with you portably, uh, yep. like it's a, an extension cord. But it just takes that's away that I'm... annoyance of the, you know, the the ghost, the gremlin that knots up all your stuff. Oh. You know, <laughs> it just makes it really, really nice. The okay, new... so we are going to have to okay. no Tara Tara Dare is trying to is gonna is trying to get in. We told her, but before we have to <laughs> say goodbye to. Pauline, Pauline you're I want first. to ask everyone a question. Do I, I just start though with Dan because I want to put him in the hot seat because he's the goofballiest of them all. Come on. One sentence. What was your first shop frustration that you ever had as a woodworker? Frustration? First shop, like you're like, oh, I, I gotta make, I gotta change this. It's gotta be this way. Um, probably despite what you see behind me, uh, probably. Behind me, you're seeing the only like two feet of pegboard in my shop. I went away from pegboard entirely, kind of what Chip was saying. I'm huge into mechanics chests with drawers, and I put almost all small tools in those with drawers to just reduce clutter. That hanging everything on the wall, it was just always crazy. So I use for the wall, I'll do uh, extension cords and tape and some of that stuff. But small tools, I keep it all in uh, rolling tool chests that I can, they don't move around often, but if I need to, I can move them around and everything's concealed and organized. And I do like that. I, I used to have everything up on the wall and it was just, it got crazy. And other than that, I would say space. And you're always, well, other than Chip, you're always wishing you had more space. But <laughs> doing okay. But you okay. probably wish you had more space. Pauline, what's your what was your one your top frustration? The first thing you were like, ah, oh, I got <laughs> Well, it's to, first of all, there's a car that kept trying to park in here. That's and I it's like so keeping establishing it as my space and not a place to park a car was interesting. But honestly, it still is a frustration. It's the dust and. I'm, a, I'm one of those people that needs a surface to set so I just set stuff on surfaces and all of my surfaces get like I can't put stuff away so I'm kind of the opposite of what we've been in amazement of I, yeah so I I put stuff on surfaces so I need to I just need a magnet that will just grab something when I toss it in the air <laughs> <laughs> they're being silly we have to say goodbye to you Polly okay. you know Thank how you much, so much I I love you my wife's name is Polly so I'm uh, I already feel connected oh. <laughs> yes all right then oh. we're connected okay I'm enjoy good that to, good to know <laughs> check See out you guys check out Pauline does at my altered state you'll be floored and amazed it's wonderful gorgeous stuff and we have to let Tara there in, in. And while we're, while we're bouncing out, hi, Pauline, we will bring in Tara. But as I am bringing her in, I want to say, Chip, yep. what was, I'm sure you didn't start off with a shop like this. What was your, your first thing you're like, got to go? No, I think really Pauline really hit it as well. It's really about workspace and, and organization. And if you do not have a designated work table, uh, nothing is going to work. Um, so having one spot that's just a place that don't that things don't get stored on ever 
uh, making that the place where you have modularity. Maybe it's something where you have um, clamps on the side. Maybe it's something where you have bench dogs, or maybe it's just literally, you know, a, a block top uh, that will fully support a four by eight sheet of something uh, that you can just basically have as a workstation with circulation all the way around. If you can start centrally in your shop with that, everything else starts to fall into place. But my first shop, I didn't do that. Uh, and you're always having to move things 10 times to make room for the one thing that you're trying to work on. And putting stuff away, right? It's true. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's why if you have a place for it yeah. and you know where it goes, you just, that every single second that you spend an organization in your shop pays off tenfold, uh, in productivity later in the project. Yeah. Totally agree. Chip, Let's I'm going to say make, hi to Tara. I'm going to make fun of you please, for a second. Um, are, you, are, you timing Do what? Projects? are you timing your projects down in the second? I'm making oh, fun oh, of you. Oh, oh, is my clock in the background? Oh, yeah, yeah. that's is my clock in the background. NASCAR. NASCAR you got to know what time it is, walk. right? You know? Got to spend some time with the kiddos or I'll stay down here forever. <laughs> I would too. Oh, my gosh. You know, they can yeah, it's like the um, Paris Hotel in Vegas. Like you never know what day, what time of day it is because you have like like natural sunlight, like light in there. Don't, it's like oh, I mean, don't it's be midday. fooled. This place gets Every blown day. up when it gets project time. I get down in here and it gets. I mean, and we I use it. Um, I'm just very diligent about getting it cleaned up. That's part of the project. Uh, so the next project is motivational. Nothing's worse than coming down to a messy shop when you're trying to start something. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Tara Dara is joining us. Yeah, I'm like looking at it on. thinking, whoa, look at that brim, man. I look like Holly Hobby or something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. I've been talking about your... Um... <laughs> what? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, your, um, right. That, that you sent me. I didn't shared it with anyone because I, it was shared with me in confidence. But so she's <laughs> going to tell everyone about I it. I have to tell you, girl, the, mu God. the muscular thing and the it was a was that competition. Oh, I can hear myself. Sorry. Um, it was an all natural bodybuilding competition. And I competed when my second boy was just seven months old. And it was amazing. So, but they see the guns. Well, they're not, <laughs> they're not there anymore. Not as much yeah. as before. It's pretty but, good. but, um, cause the, the guys, what was it last week? You guys were talking about like, um, fitness and DIY and stuff like that. And so I'm like, Oh, check it. So anyways, it was something that I had always wanted to do. And I had lost over 60 pounds to do it in like six months. And, um, it was just, oh, that's it was a It was one of the best days of my life. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Lots wow. of work. So, wow. Okay, I'm twenty inspired. burpees. Go. I'm totally inspired. Okay, so we only have like five minutes left. So I want to ask Tara, like, what's what's like been your first your first shop frustration working? And unlike Chip, I'm not the mm. kind to he 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 was seven months old when <laughs> when I competed, and now he's almost eight. Anyway, so oh, no. I can't see you. I'm turning my head. What's up, oh, bud? Hi there. Yeah, hi, Matthew. Hello. <laughs> and then this one here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so job. my yeah, it was that, definitely that um, space. I don't. I'm not well at cleaning up. I get distracted, and I'm kind of. Um, I guess I'm ADD, and I'm like squirrel, and then I forget what I was doing, and then blah. Anyway, so. That's my frustration. I guess it's myself, I guess, is my frustration. <laughs> well, I have the same thing. It's surprising, though, right, Dan? What do you mean? That it's, I get distracted. I, and I, I, go, I don't see that in you. And all, all the times we've spent together, you've been so laser focused on whatever it is <laughs> we're working on. But uh, I don't know, maybe. <sighs> Oh my gosh, I had the best time ever when we went to that vacation. I want to do it again. Look at Chip. He's like, he uses his tools as like furniture. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it's a nice wax finish. It's good for the old bald head, you know? <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. That is hilarious. Okay, so we only have a couple of minutes. I want to do a, a go around go around our blabby bunch and find out what everyone's working on these days. I'm going to oh, ask Kip first. Uh, all right, here, I'll sit up for this. <laughs> He's so comfortable. I know. It was, it was good. Um, let's see. I, I mean... I, my probably my biggest struggle is having too much going on. So right now I'm in the process uh, from probably what you guys have seen me do. Uh, I'm filming another season of uh, of my series right now, but I'm shooting a pilot with my wife, um, <laughs> which is cool. So maybe y'all will see that at some point on HGTV, uh, which will be awesome. But it's still all about renovation and design. I do it's it's heavy hitting. Um, and it's all one of a kind stuff and very custom, uh, which is the only way I like to do it. So, uh, do a lot of projects here around my own house, uh, as well as kind of, uh, we've also started uh, a real estate portion of our business. Um, so, uh, all kinds of different stuff is keeping us busy. Uh, but like I said, I mean, I'm always building something down here so in the what? shop. I just built this big walnut barn door, door slider for my master bathroom. I just did a huge backyard oh. renovation uh, where I finished it literally this morning where I brought in 160,000 pounds of rocks. It's like ridiculous amount of rocks. Uh, I'll have to show you guys that at some point, but I actually love exterior renovation. Uh, it's like my favorite thing ever. So uh, building one off custom pieces is great. Just finished up another season of that Ellen's design challenge where it was all the furniture building stuff, which was cool. Oh, cool. Um, so y'all have to check that out. But yeah, uh, love and life, spending time with the kids. Uh, trying to spend as much time with my beautiful wife as possible and uh, build cool stuff. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. Now, do you have kids climbing all over you like there are? Constantly. I have a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a seven-year-old. So you can imagine they love being down here in the workshop. I teach them how to, how to make stuff. stuff and try to not let them cut the nests. It's always me, a right? good goal, right? <laughs> That's really an essential. Goal. Yep. Okay, so Dan, Woodworkers Journal, what are we going to be seeing from you? Uh, well, what are we you just wrapped about? up, you know, doing the vacation with you guys a week ago, and I got back yesterday. We spent the weekend down in Atlanta at Maker Fair doing similar stuff, teaching wood turning, and uh, we we're doing some uh, laser etching, CNC stuff. So all that's wrapped up, and uh, we've got some new projects coming up for the magazine. But actually, at home, I'm similar to Skip. I'm trying to wrap up ongoing projects at home i've got uh two kids it's that haven't had uh trim on their windows i replaced the windows Nathan. three years ago Nathan. So, Nathan. the, the awesome. coming down about that. um and then i live in the twin Cities, so winter's coming so we're, i'm trying to roll projects and landscaping stuff here at home um that's so rollerblades. Kind of what's going on, and my kids are a little older, yeah. and so they're uh, going to be a little bit more helpful. Yeah. Project. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I I need to get that <laughs> rollerblades. Someone, yeah, someone get some rollerblades. Oh my gosh, Mark, go get your rollerblades. Let them borrow them. Rollerblades on. Oh my gosh, yeah, they're well. so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we all have them. They're little people. They're wonderful and frustrating all at the same time. And we do have them. We do, though. But Tara, what I, are you working on? Can what I show you what I just give? finished? Actually, I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, yeah. We just um, cut down one of our um, aspen trees because it was dead, unfortunately. And um, so I made this. Oh, Matthew's going to hold it up for me. Um, I made two of them. Flip it around this way. Yeah like that, hold it like that, there you go. And I made the frame, here, let me just, I'll flip it. So it's gonna go on the wall and it's gonna have like like that negative space. So yeah, so I've got two of them that I made and um, yeah, and I'm also refinishing a table right now with this beautiful stain. So I'm not going to walk you around my shop because it's a little bit embarrassing after what we just saw. So. No. <laughs> 
So I've already made it, it like chips yeah. in another world. All shot for like good shot. Shot. <laughs> it's all the, it's all the same <laughs> stuff. It's all the same stuff, just your own flavor. Oh, I'd you love know? I love your flavor. <laughs> I mean, goodness, I think all of us do. It's beautiful and you're um just really inspiring to so just thanks for that tour. <laughs> Well, what I'd love if y'all are ever in Atlanta, which it sounds like, Dan, you just were, but next time you are, please, please come by. Let's hang fun. out. Let's make something, man. I'm, uh, I'm yeah, all about it. <laughs> we'll totally be there, like, in five or seven yeah, right. minutes. <laughs> what you guys can see behind us, these uh, studs we have in our rough framing, all like sliding dovetails one. into the bottom Dovetail. top. I just want you to know. Sliding dovetails, Dan. Sliding. Right. I mean, come on. <laughs> Who's gonna gun mail those? That's that's a hack. <laughs> I think I need to get my husband guys, to bed. He's a little crazy. You guys or are cocktail. awesome. Yeah, thank it's you guys for, for joining us. Because woodworking rules, and I love hearing, and like it makes me want to go do more stuff. Which we're gonna do. We're out. You guys rock. Dan Carey, Tara Dara, Chip Wade, Duresta. Yeah. Colleen. Everybody Colleen. else who joined us. Uh, <laughs> over there, too. Love your comments. We're going to, like, go through them painstakingly later and, like, reply and celebrate all of everyone sharing. Because half the comments are about Chip. Just. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. Side, my altar. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is totally the Brady Bunch. There needs to be theme music. Yeah, I'm not gonna sing. Is it that the That's Jefferson? Sanford, you know. <laughs> You're just making me feel bad about I'm, my home now, I'm darling. Gonna, I'm gonna carry all right, out. All right. Bye, guys. See you guys. Bye. We'll bounce you out. Bye.